Hello everyone! Today is a big day for crossing something off my to-do list because today I am finally going to review a film that I have referred to many times before, 1949's Mighty Joe Young. This video is ridiculously overdue. It was always my intention to review King Kong, Son of Kong, and Mighty Joe Young, bam bam bam. But I did King Kong in September 2020, Son of Kong in November 2020, and then... <laughs> I don't know what happened, but we're doing it today! Produced by John Ford and Marion C. Cooper and directed by Ernest B. Shadesack, this film stars Terry Moore, Ben Johnson, Robert Armstrong, and Mr. Joseph Young as himself. Jill Young is a little girl living with her father on a farm in Africa. Eager for companionship, she buys a baby gorilla from some passing animal traders, and he becomes her playmate. But twelve years later, baby Joe Young is now a very big gorilla, and when showman Carl Denham, whoops, sorry, Max O'Hara discovers him, he sets his heart on bringing Joe and Jill to Hollywood to be the main attraction at his new Golden Safari nightclub. Story-wise, though there are similarities, Mighty Joe Young is unrelated to King Kong and its sequel, but the three films do go together because they were made by the same people. This was a reunion for many of the folks who made King Kong a success. Producer Cooper, director Shadesack, his wife, screenwriter Ruth Rose, effects creator Willis O'Brien, sculptor and model maker Marcel Delgado, and star Robert Armstrong. Among fantasy and effects enthusiasts, of course, this film is known as the first major accomplishment of stop-motion animation king Ray Harryhausen under the supervision of his mentor and the man who inspired him, Willis O'Brien. Harryhausen is credited as first technician to O'Brien's technical creator, but it was Harryhausen who did most of the animating while O'Brien was tied up with other issues. And he had assistance from Pete Peterson, a lighting technician who was so enthralled with the process that he practiced at home and ended up becoming second technician. You might remember I talked about Peterson's remarkable story when I reviewed 1957's The Black Scorpion a few months ago. Thanks to their cumulative efforts, Mighty Joe Young won an Academy Award for Best Special Effects. And while it wasn't a huge box office success when it was released, it has become a beloved classic. It's like a lighter, more streamlined, more kid-friendly version of King Kong that succeeds where Son of Kong faltered. It's got a quicker pace, less violence, a smaller beast, although Joe does vary in size, and a happy ending. The film also has an engaging cast, led by Terry Moore as the young lady who has a special connection with the giant gorilla. Despite her youth, Moore was an experienced performer, having acted since childhood, and she's great as the naive girl who falls for the glittery appeal of show business, only to find it's not all it's cracked up to be for her and her monkey friend. I'm sure this isn't why they cast her, it was more like a bonus, but Terry Moore's petite stature, she's even shorter than me, does make for an even greater contrast with her tall leading men, by which I mean both Mr. Young and Mr. Johnson. Ben Johnson, a cowboy and roping champion from Oklahoma, plays Greg Johnson, a cowboy and roping champion from Oklahoma. This was his first credited role, released just a few months before his significant supporting role in She Wore a Yellow Ribbon. Famously, Ben Johnson traveled to Hollywood just to deliver some horses to Howard Hughes. He caught Hughes' attention and wound up working as a stuntman, and then caught John Ford's attention when his quick thinking and expert horsemanship rescued some men from a runaway wagon. Ford rewarded him with a contract that launched a surprisingly successful acting career, and in addition to featuring him in several of his own films, suggested him for this significant role in Mighty Joe Young, which turned out to be a rare part for Johnson, being a fantasy film where he gets to play a lead role and gets the girl in the end. Some of you may recall, <laughs> how could you forget, <laughs> that this year, this summer, I've been having kind of a do I like Ben Johnson now thing going on. Um, watching this, it did kind of come back to me that 
I did really like him in this movie the last time I saw it, which, according to my list, was in 2014. So, <laughs> this wasn't a new thing. I just forgot. He is very likable here as a rodeo cowboy looking for work who jumps at the chance to go to Africa. There are some great stunts, naturally, but more importantly, Greg is a super good guy. He and Jill do get off on the wrong foot, but after he humbly apologizes and explains the situation, she softens up. They become friendly as he sticks up for her and cautions her about rushing into a contract with O'Hara and leaving her beautiful home. He then befriends Joe and looks after both of them in the wild city. And then in the third act, he rescues two little kids from a burning building for crying out loud. How heroic can you get? Robert Armstrong is great here. Yes, Max O'Hara is very similar to Carl Denham, who was modeled on Marion C. Cooper. O'Hara is everything Denham was, only somehow more. <laughs> Wendy, you are looking at the new Max O'Hara. Dignified, restrained, artistic. Classy. Armstrong seems to be having a ton of fun in the role. He hams it up with glee and gets some of the best lines, as he did in King Kong. And he happily commits wily shenanigans to help Joe escape in the final act. The cast also features Frank McHugh as O'Hara's beleaguered assistant, Regis Toomey as a big game hunter, and Laura Lee Michelle as young Jill, who opens the film with her precocious performance. Keep an eye out also for prolific bit player Gary Owen as a bartender at the nightclub, Nestor Paiva as an inebriated patron, and William Shallert, Nancy Drew's dad, says mom, as the gas station attendant. Supposedly Richard Farnsworth is one of the cowboys. I can't spot him, but maybe you have better eyes than me. The real star of the show, though, is Mr. Joseph Young, brought to life through the painstaking efforts of the animation team. I find Joe to be more anthropomorphic than King Kong was, thanks largely to improvements in facial expression animation. He is a thoroughly sympathetic creature who is never frightening, not really, even when he rages at the intrusive humans. One of his most endearing traits is his sauciness, and some of the best parts of the animation are the little things, Joe shaking his fist, peeking out of his hiding place, spitting at the policeman in hot pursuit, and drumming his fingers. When I reviewed The Valley of Guanji this summer, which Harryhausen did the effects for, someone pointed out that Mighty Joe Young actually did this sort of genre mashup first. While I wouldn't call this a monster movie, Joe is an unusually large gorilla, so it is accurate to hail this as the first cowboys and kaiju combo. And you're absolutely right, the sequence where the cowboys try to rope Guanji is extremely similar to the one here where they try to rope Joe. I do find it a shame that with our fancy-schmancy, high-definition, 4K, 8K televisions, we have inadvertently changed how we see movies like this. I don't begrudge the clarity of the picture quality, but the higher resolution does rob the special effects of some of their magic and mystery. Differences in texture, lighting, shadows, and movement that reveal how the shot was put together are fairly obvious now, and that is fascinating, especially if you're someone who likes to go through a movie like this and analyze each frame and pick it apart to see how a shot was composed. But sometimes I miss the days when we had fewer pixels. I think the first time I saw this movie it was on a cathode ray tube TV, and it was... <laughs> It was more magical. It was a little bit better when it was less likely you'd notice the reflection of the models in the background here, and you couldn't see the glint from the wires holding up the piano. For me, it doesn't change my appreciation of the special effects. It actually has an opposite effect where I feel like, oh wow, yeah, it gives me a perspective on how they actually got this done, and I feel like... Wow! <laughs> That's a lot of work! This is so much more complicated than I ever realized. But, I know that for some people, seeing wires and seeing little goofs like this does take them out of the moment and does make them think, 
these special effects are, are lame, this is so uh, amateurish, Ugh, whatever. And I think that's too bad. Anyway, the film features a rousing score composed by Roy Webb. It's not quite equal to Max Steiner's famous music for King Kong, but it fits the action very well. It's a mid-19th century classic from the American Songbook, however, that people remember most from this movie, Stephen Foster's Beautiful Dreamer, which Jill uses to calm Joe down. <laughs> That's a good boy. It's played so often throughout the film that chances are good it'll be stuck in your head after you watch it. I know it's been stuck in mine for the last few days. If there's anything sort of negative I have to say about the movie, it's that compared to the first and third acts, the second act is kind of a drag. The safari nightclub scenes seem a little long. This wasn't the case the first time I watched the movie, or even the second. These scenes are perfectly fine, showing Joe's debut at the nightclub and the public's reception, the increasingly demeaning routines, and Jill and Greg's disappointment about the situation as Joe gets more and more depressed. All of that is important to the story, there is no pointless filler, and it's certainly not boring, I'm not saying that it's boring, but it is the slowest part of the movie, and it brings us down to an emotional low point, and having seen the movie four or five times now, I find I just don't consider the middle section as enjoyable or as interesting as the rest of it, comparatively speaking. But it's a good lead-in to the awesome third act, which is the fun, caper-like portion of the film that kicks off with the destruction of the impressive Golden Safari set, and then transitions to a suspenseful and entertaining chase split between Max O'Hara giving the police the runaround, and Jill and Greg making a speedy getaway with a moving van they got from who knows where and a hijacked truck. Then the whole thing crescendos as they encounter a blazing orphanage and the picture turns a magnificent orange-red. I suppose someone might say it's a little gimmicky, maybe, but I've always thought this part was incredible. It conveys the heat and the peril of the flames as Jill and Greg rush into the burning building. It's thrilling stuff, the effects are superb, possibly the best in the whole film, and you're really on the edge of your seat, especially when Joe comes to the rescue, because you don't know what might happen. I saw the two Kong films. There is a precedent for tragic endings here. But fortunately, they don't go in that direction, everything works out fine, and it ends on a very positive note. As I'm sure many of you are aware, Mighty Joe Young was remade in 1998 with Charlize Theron and Bill Paxton. I saw some of that as a kid. I know most of us who favor the classics have a tendency to poo-poo remakes, but I remember thinking this one was pretty good. Now, that was 20 plus years ago, and I hadn't seen the original yet, so I didn't have anything to compare it to, but um, it's my understanding that the 98 version is pretty well liked. To wrap things up, I think Mighty Joe Young is a great film, fun for the whole family. Its effects were ahead of their time and still hold up if you have an open mind. It's funny, it's got good action, a good story, good messages, good characters, and it culminates in a thoroughly entertaining last half hour and dazzling finale. In certain ways, I enjoy it more than King Kong. But that seems wrong to say, so let's just keep that between you and me. I hope you enjoyed this much-delayed review. Let me know your thoughts on Mighty Joe Young in the comments below, and I'll see you next time with another movie review. Thanks for watching!